Hello, everyone. Um, welcome and thank you for attending. Um, we're going to start out with an introduction of our team here. So um, I'll go first. Uh, my name is Cameron So. Um, I've been a project lead uh, with Intuit for a while now. Um, and um, I'll throw it over to Wes. Uh, I'm Wes Thorburn. I'm a full stack software developer from Australia. And I'm mostly working on the front end of our website. Hi, I'm Deanna, uh, graphic designer, and uh, I've been the lead designer for this team for a while now, almost since the beginning. So. I'm Austin Shea, I'm a full stack developer. I've been uh, mainly the back end software developer in this project for, I guess it's been almost two years now. Um, and we'd also like to thank uh, the folks who are attending. Uh, there's a lot of people who have contributed to this project who aren't up here speaking, but we're really grateful for their help over time, and some of them are in the audience, so uh, thank you uh, to those who have contributed to the project along the way. Um, but we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so I um, want to talk a little bit about the context of the project that we've been working on. So for about a year and a half, we've been working on making it easier for people in the city of Chicago to get um, involved in their communities. and. Um, when the project first started, it wasn't clear that there's going to be enough momentum or even uh, clear problem definition. But over time, we've been able uh, to uh, clarify what exactly we're working on. Uh, the context in which this exists is that um, we're in a time where there's a renewed emphasis on civic engagement. So um, a lot of issues were surfaced uh, in the last election around um, political polarization, increasing atomization of our society, as well as um, a lot of our social activities have shifted online. At the same time, we're starting to um, re-evaluate uh, the value of in-person experiences. Um, we think that um, places like uh, Shy Hack Night or opportunities found on Meetup are reflections of this um, interest in trying to find additional opportunities uh, to be in person around shared interest, uh, but also around civic society. Um, so we're reconsidering what civic life means but we realized that even though it's really easy to find an entertaining way to spend the weekend, it's really hard to find a way to go get involved. There's a lot of obstacles. And uh, talking with um, people who were interested in getting more involved, they uh, um, shared some pretty clear um, challenges they faced in getting uh, involved. Um, we also want to point out that we're drawing from a formidable American in Chicago tradition of civic engagement. Um, going back to, if you remember, like in high school civics, like Alexis de Tocqueville in uh, America being a network of small associations, or the Burnham Plan, which is the photo here of um, dreaming what Chicago could look like with a, a civic center at its core. Um, so these are all contextually relevant when we're considering our project. Um, but at a basic level, um, while there's still a lot of consideration about what exactly civic engagement m means, we think that it has a lot to do with the shared responsibility, um, shared responsibility to be among citizens, among people who live in a city, uh, to each other and to the broader communities of which we're a part. Uh, and that's the context in which we exist. And we think that civic engagement matters and that um, when done well, it can lead to uh, improvements uh, in different areas of the city. Um, so a note about how we got our start. So. Um, in the wake of the election, a uh, famous American politician um, said that if you're concerned about the ways that um, things are going in the country, you should grab a clipboard and uh, uh, get off the sidelines. Um, so in a way, the uh, person who started the Intuit project did just that. So Lydia Jessup uh, started the project with the idea of um, a civic health tracker. How do we get people more involved? Are there ways to find opportunities in the city that aren't uh, currently represented or easy to find? Um, and um, Lydia actually had to leave to grad school um, a year ago, but there was enough momentum around the project that uh, was able to sustain it up uh, through present day. Um, so over time, we started accumulating interest, uh, expertise, and other contributions um, which sustained the project over time. So it's really been its own representation of what civic engagement looks like in the city. And so I'll run through a brief history of where we've uh, uh, gone so far. And this is going to be very brief. It took a long time to do each one of these steps, but just so you have some context of where we've been. Uh, so with the help of some folks from the University of Chicago, um, we put out a survey asking people a little bit about how they get involved, um, what obstacles they face, and really uh, trying to understand the problem that we're addressing. Um, we were able to do, uh, with the help of some folks in the audience, um, some data analysis and um, really look into the data at a more granular level and um, segment out 
um, roughly two uh, categories of engagement that we wanted to focus in on, and then we found people from those segments and did user research. So we asked them to tell us a little bit about their journey for getting civically engaged. What, what does that mean to them? What does it look like if they're trying to find a way to have an impact at the city level or on an issue like housing? Um, and we got a lot of really helpful insights from that, enough to confirm uh, what the problem area that we were focused on was and to learn a little bit about what a solution might look like. Um, at the same time, um, the scraping infrastructure was being developed. And this is a technical infrastructure that was developed from scratch and something that Austin will speak more to in a moment, uh, as well as Wes. And um, along, along the same time, we were also doing uh, our early wireframes and eventually we made our first API call. I also want to point out that the logo, um, it's, it might seem um, like uh, a small thing initially, but it ended up being a really important um, symbolic representation of the project. And I think um, around the same time that the logo was created, we started having a lot more momentum and it started becoming more real along with the wireframes and the technical infrastructure. Um, and um, moving forward, our, our focus was a lot on making sure that we were building with and not for. So making sure that we were continually doing user research and iterating on the version of the web platform that we um, had at that time. So, go to Wes. So uh, we've been working on this project for about a year and a half now, a bit more than that actually, and we've learned quite a bit during that time about the ins and outs of running a breakout group at Hack Night. And so we've condensed it down to these five lessons. Uh, the first, first thing we learned very early on is that we have a very high turnover of newcomers. So a lot of the people that come to Hack Night really only show up for one, one, great, one breakout group meeting and then we don't see them again after that. So the obvious reasons are you know, uh, family and work commitments and whatnot, but there are two less obvious reasons that I, th I think might be uh, factors at play here. Uh, first, there might be some hesitation around switching groups. So if somebody joins our group and maybe decides that it's not the best fit for them, um, we think there's maybe some hesitation of coming back the next week and joining a different breakout group out of fear that maybe that's disrespectful to our group in some way. And we'd like to stress that's absolutely not the case. You know, people should come back to Hack Night week after week and keep joining different breakout groups uh, without fear that that's you know, disrespectful to the previous ones. And the other factor at play here is there might be a bit of, a, bit of guilt over lack of contributions to the project. So this is relevant if maybe somebody joins our group and they might promise some small deliverable and Perhaps the following week at work there, it's, it's kind of busy and you know, they don't get it done. And you know, I think we've all been there. But um, they, they might, might feel a little bit guilty about coming back the next week empty-handed perhaps. So for them, it might be easy just to not, not to show up at all. And again, we don't think that should be the case. Uh, we're we're very, um, very relaxed with, with newcomers and very relaxed about uh, you know, contributions taking a little longer. Um, the second lesson we learned here is that newcomers, uh, we need to let them proceed at their own pace. So um, one, th one thing we're, we're very relaxed about is onboarding newcomers. Uh, we don't actually assign anybody tasks. We don't assign anybody uh, deadlines or deliverables or anything like that. With newcomers, we'll, we'll get them into the project. We'll show them what we're working on currently and like the, the immediate focus. We'll answer all of their questions along the way. And then we'll kind of just let them pick tasks that they want to do uh, on their own. We, we don't force anything on them. And we've found that's been pretty successful at, uh, at onboarding and retaining newcomers. The third lesson here is uh, we found that small groups uh, work, work well. Uh, they work much, much more efficiently than larger groups. Now this is especially relevant when we have uh, a, lot of, a lot of people showing up. So we might have a regular attendance of you know, four or five people, but if we get you know, four or five newcomers as well, suddenly we've got nearly 10 people in our group. And uh, we've found that when that happens, it works best to split into two, two subgroups, so a front end and a back end component. So that way the two groups can discuss uh, topics that are more relevant to their immediate focus and um, it, it tends to work better. So two, two small groups of five works much more efficiently than one big group of ten. The uh, fourth lesson here is less intentional, but we found that uh, most of the productive time that we spend on the project happens outside of Hack Night, uh, so on evenings and weekends. And the time that we do spend at Hack Night is, is often spent um, talking about kind of high-level surface topics. Uh, so, you know, it might be things like uh, website features and, f and uh, functionality to add. It might be, um, you know, surface level UI design, that sort of thing. And we feel as though that level of conversation makes us approachable to a pretty wide range of backgrounds as well. 
Um, so that way, when newcomers join the group, they don't need to worry about having a, a large background knowledge. They can kind of just jump in because it, it's pretty much just a group conversation. And the fifth lesson here is pretty much just the sum of the first four, and that is uh, volunteer projects move slowly. Uh, there's no other way to put that, really, and I think a lot of the breakout groups here are, are familiar with that. Um, but ultimately, you know, we're all volunteers. We donate what time we have when we can, and as a result, it takes longer to get things done. Um, but I think over time, we've gotten a much better understanding of uh, you know, what we're capable of and how long it takes us to do it, and a lot of our goals and uh, deadlines are much more realistic now than they were when we first started. Which brings us on to our next slide here, which is uh, some of the early, early concepts, uh, wireframes and mockups of our website design. Uh, when we first started, we, we pretty much just had what was like a web interface for a database table. And uh, it, it wasn't particularly pretty, but it got the job done. Um, but through an iterative design process and through uh, help, um, well, a lot of, lot of user testing and implementing the feedback, uh, as well as suggestions from our UX designers, we've gradually brought the website to something that's a little more focused on the user's journey and, and less on just displaying uh, data from a, from a table. Um, we do have a lot more planned. We have a lot more functions and uh, features to add. So I expect that probably by this time next year, this website is going to look quite a bit different. Just a quick bit here on the front end for anybody interested. Uh, we started with Vue.js as our front end JavaScript framework. Uh, and then we very quickly switched to Nuxt.js, which is pretty much just Vue.js, but runs on the server side instead. Um, when we made that switch, it was mostly for SEO and speed bonuses. Um, we are pretty happy with our choice in Vue.js, mostly because it's, it's pretty well documented, which you know, it's not always the case with JavaScript frameworks. Um, we're also, we also like that the HTML and CSS editing is pretty transparent. It's not hidden behind layers and layers of abstractions like some JavaScript frameworks might be. Um, so th this makes it pretty, pretty helpful with, uh, with newcomers. So they can kind of uh, get a feel for the project and contribute without getting too bogged down in the implementation details. Uh, now, we are going to get to the back-end tech stack in just a minute. But first, I'm going to hand you over to Deanna for a closer look at the design and user interface components. So um, as mentioned before, our, our focus has been to create um, a website that is really intuitive and really user friendly. Um, and most of that is because we spend a lot of time um, doing user testing and um, just really asking people, what are you looking for? Uh, what's working? What's not? Um, so we're, we're pretty much just in constant, constant um, flux and um, just evolution of this whole process. Um, so, and that's actually where we got um, the, the data and everything that we needed to get our initial mockups and wireframes, which ended up being applied to um, the website. Um, I, we, once the site was actually created, um, we've actually we've actually gone through so many rounds of user testing, like y'all have no idea. <laughs> but it's been so so valuable, um, and we've we've used that to really um, really uh, make our features a lot smarter, a lot um, a lot more focused, and and driven on serving the user. Um, so. Um, we've also had a lot of collaboration from uh, other designers, um, UX designers and web designers that have uh, been attacking, uh, attending Shy Hack Night, and uh, we're super grateful for their contributions as well. Uh, it's been very helpful to get outside per perspectives and um, you know, feedback from people that have uh, specializations in different areas. Um, and uh, I've been working on a lot of the design process uh, throughout the project, um, but my favorite part by far has been working on the uh, brand identity design. Um, one of the features that has um, been really exciting for the whole team has been the, the logo, um, creating kind of our, our beginning identity um, for the site. This, um, this logo was designed to, to create an image of like community working together and um, getting into it. Um, it was designed to 
basically look like uh, people coming together, linking together, and um, and you know creating a very strong community. Um, there's a lot of other um, a lot of other visual uh, changes that are going to be made hopefully very soon um, to the website. So you know keep an eye out for that. But um, for now, I'm gonna pass you off to uh, Austin, who will tell you a little bit more about what's going on on the back end of the site. Yeah, just want to talk briefly about the um, back end implementation details for any developers in the audience. Um, first of all, we're using Docker to host everything. Uh, Docker, for those who don't know, is a tool that basically allows you to package all of your dependencies and all of your code into a single container, which you can then install on any computer that has Docker installed. And in theory, it should work the same way. Um, of course, it's not always the case, but it's a step in the right direction. Um, this allows us to have new newcomers onboarded more quickly. They don't have to manually install databases and everything. That's more some intrusive stuff on their computer. They just run a single script, and in theory, it should just work. Um, this should hopefully make the onboarding experience much more pleasurable and retain new users. Um, we're, we're using something called Scrapy as a, a Python framework for web scraping. What this allows us to do is quickly crawl multiple domains in a single framework and aggregate all that data into pipelines, which will then transform the data into a single model, which we can use to store in our database. Um, the backend API is written in Node.js. Um, it's easy to use, well-supported, pretty popular. The implementation details are well-suited towards our use case. Um, we're hosting everything on AWS. Right now, we have a, a free tier hardware we're using for that. Um, so we have to make some architectural concessions just because free tier is pretty small. So we have to think about RAM and CPU usage and some things you may not usually have to think about in like a corporate environment where you have some beefier hardware. Um, for our database, we're using PostgreSQL. Um, it's well-supported open source SQL database. It's got some nice bells and whistles that some other open source SQL databases don't have, such as text search, JSON, geospatial data support. Um, and last, we're using a tool called ND Scheduler. This was built by Nextdoor. We're maintaining our own fork of it. We've added some other implementation details that suit our use case of running scrapers on it and having asynchronous events fire and wait, essentially. Um, so next, we'll talk about the architecture a little bit. Um, so here's just a high-level architectural diagram. Uh, it starts out at the uh, scheduler. As soon as the scheduler calls a scraper, that'll hit something called scrape ID, which is basically just a web front end on top of scrapers. So that'll basically allow for remote code execution of the actual scrapers, which then calls the event processor. That'll run the actual scrapers, modify the data, insert the database via our event service API, which again gets inserted to Postgres, and then the site will query the data via that same API. Um, so then I think next we're going to talk about the next steps. Yeah. Um, so we're now in uh, just a fundamentally different phase of the project, and we're preparing uh, moving forward. So we have a prototype, but we want to um, get it ready to be a beta for the broader Chicago community. But we have a few things that we have to do to get there. Um, we've updated our project roadmap with uh, kind of the next suite of things that we're focused on. Um, some of them might seem obvious to you. you might have, if you've been looking at the site while we've been speaking, um, you might have thought about some of them. Um, we think keywords, keyword search would be helpful for our users. We also think that um, add to cal calendar feature is really important. Uh, and um, we also think it's really important, and um, potential users that we've spoken with have suggested um, that they want to be able to submit events, and they want to be able to um, log in and edit those events as needed. Um, but we have to build the uh, technical infrastructure to be able to do that. And so that's going to be um, another phase of the project. Um, but we're really excited because uh, the organizations that we've spoken to have already expressed interest on this um, side of things. And um, we really are focused on broadening the universe of civic engagement opportunities that are represented on the site. That will take time, but um, we've um, been focused a lot on developing that uh, core infrastructure um, and usability, the key functionality. Um, but now we can um, uh, be a little bit more creative in the user journey, the user experience, and really um, bear down on what um, value we can bring to organizations as well as the people who are trying to get involved in Chicago. Um, and then um, categories. I got to say shout out to the University of Chicago tech team. Um, categories is a challenging issue for a number of reasons that we won't dive too much into. But um, if you're searching a site like this and you're trying to find a civic engagement event or opportunity, you might be really interested in housing or you might be really interested in sustainability or the environment uh, or homelessness. And we think that categories uh, will help uh, people find the right civic engagement opportunities for them. Um, but it 
presents some interesting technical challenges, which you can ask us about um, afterwards if you're interested in, in how we're approaching that challenge. Uh, and then sustainability. We're volunteers, and the folks who've worked on this project have put in an incredible amount of time and effort on this project. Um, one of the things we've been talking about um, from early on is what would this look like as a sustainable um, organization and thinking about what are the limits not just on our time and the constraints that we face technically and otherwise, but um, what would it look like for this to be a sustainable organization um, for the medium and long term. And so that's something that we've been planning for and um, are now spending much more time on uh, moving forward. And then X, like so we think there's more to be done on the user journey. What does it mean to try to find an event and have a really excellent experience, not just going to that event, being at the event, um, but um, what is the social element of that process too? I think we're still learning more about what this looks like from A to B from the user perspective, and we think it's a big opportunity, um, but um, it's still early on in considering what that looks like. Um, so how can you help? Um, the only way this project has gotten so far is because so many people have contributed in such s substantial ways at every leg of the journey. So some people have just attended and provided some brief feedback, or some people have um, been here for a while and then maybe things got busy. But um, that feedback, uh, that critique, the suggestions and recommendations have been invaluable. So if you're looking at the site and you think, well, why don't you just do this? Or um, I wonder why they did that. That type of feedback is really helpful. Um, especially the uh, critique, too. The, the negative feedback can be really helpful, too, in uh, calibrating. Um, so also, um, a lot of you um, are involved in civic engagement um, activities beyond Shy Hack Night. Um, that could be volunteering. That could be attending your local council meetings. Um, and there's a lot of events that we don't know about, a lot of opportunities that uh, we don't know about. And if um, you think that those should be represented on Intuit, please let us know. Um, we've been developing our criteria for how we make those selections, but we really want to expand the universe. Um, we're committed to representing all Chicago neighborhoods, to um, being accessible, and um, we could use some help as far as broadening the universe of civic engagement opportunities that are represented on the site. Um, if something's not working, let us know. Uh, um, I think folks are really good about telling us if they notice something. Um, and you can let us know as well if you want to test out some of the new features that are on the way once we have the ability to log in and um, some of the features down the road. Um, we'd love for you to test those uh, or to provide us feedback. Um, and then the reminder, this is a prototype. So if you're looking on the site, you'll notice that there's a lot of um, data from the public library um, and uh, from documenters and other places. But we're just now in the process of um, uh, adding more events over time. Um, that will take time. But um, we're trying to get to the beta so that we can release it to the broader Chicago community. And um, we think that people can get value out of the site currently, but we're really excited for the next phases because we can really start to build out that infrastructure um, for representing civic engagement opportunities across the city. Um, and then there are some very specific areas where if you have expertise, it would be wonderful if you um, were uh, if you can stop by our breakout group. Um, so you can see up here, so um, building out the login infrastructure, authentication, stuff around accounts. Um, so search uh, backend work, so um, Docker DevOps, uh, if you're comfortable in ScrapePy, um, if you want to help us building our, our scraping infrastructure um, as we prepare for people to also then be able to submit events um, in tandem. Um, Node.js, Vue.js, and Nuxt, as Wes pointed to, and then SEO. And also, is there an area that you think that we're missing, that maybe we haven't thought about this? If um, you're seeking to contribute to a project, this would be a really meaningful time to join, because we've uh, made a lot of progress, um, but uh, we're getting ready to move forward. So uh, the contributions would be uh, very helpful. Um, the last thing that I want to say is um, the folks up here and some of the folks in the audience and people who have contributed throughout the project have put a lot of time uh, effort and thought in this project, and it's been one of the um, joys of working on this project has been uh, working with such an awesome team. Uh, they've built a thing from scratch, uh, and uh, it hasn't been clear what that would look like from the outside, and it hasn't always been clear that that would be possible. And so I can't emphasize how much uh, time and effort has been put in, but I think that is really representative of the civic spirit that we're trying to bring forward, which is that. Um, we do have agency, we can solve problems, and that if uh, people um, you know, 
live out their shared responsibility, but also think creatively about shared problems, uh, we can make progress on solving them. So um, it's been uh, really wonderful getting to work with the team, and we're really glad to share um, the site with you. And for those who haven't known while we've been um, doing the presentation, intuitchicago.com is the URL. So um, I know some of you here already, already knew that, but um, there's a two in the name. So um, with that, um, thank you for your time and attention, and we'll open it up to questions. You mentioned that some of your principal challenges come from just like understanding the landscape of events and engagements that are out there in the first place and understanding what organizations are there. Um, have you spoken to other people who've put together aggregators for different purposes, but through similar processes? One that comes to mind would be Chicago City of Learning, which is all about like educational engagement opportunities for youth in the city and how they've approached that challenge of reaching out to different organizations and getting like a thorough understanding of what's going on? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, and uh, City of Learning uh, has been um, something that's been instructive to me personally as someone who's in the education and learning field, uh, as you know. But um, to that point, some of the people we've talked to uh, at, about aggregation generally are in this audience. Um, the feedback and insights have been invaluable. Um, we've been limited in our capacity on how many people we can speak to in those regards, but um, to your point, there are many people across Chicago who have um, made um, a lot of uh, substantial efforts and uh, s success on uh, aggregating events around certain uh, areas, and um, those projects have been instructive. Um, it also has been um, very humbling to understand the challenges that people have faced over a long period of time. Um, so when we're um, learning from other people, we're also trying to consider, well, so how do we not reinvent the wheel? What uh, distinguishes our uh, approach uh, and what is the unique space that we can fill here? And we think that we've found one. Um, we think there's a couple areas that we are differentiating, but um, that's something that continues to evolve as we move forward. I was wondering, were there any other cities, either in the US or worldwide, which served as an inspiration for this? That's a good question, as an inspiration. Um, so as an inspiration, we've drawn inspiration from other attempts. This is not like a revelatory attempt, right? There are people who have tried this in other areas and under different approaches. Um, we think that in our experience, trying to use some of these um, at least in Chicago, um, there's still a lot of friction for someone who's trying to, if you imagine the user experience of something like Eventbrite when you're trying to find some activity to attend as far as entertainment, you kind of have a certain expectation around that. But if you try some of the existing aggregators, there's some real issues around user interface and usability that if you're already facing obstacles and making time or trying to get transit, that it's uh, you know, gonna be much less likely that you go through that process. Um, but more specifically to your question, um, um, you know, um, volunteer work in New York has um, kind of um, aggregated around a few key sites. Um, we've looked to other cities that have attempts, but there was no one that was an inspiration uh, for ours. At an earlier point during the slides, you talked about the fact that volunteer projects tend to move s more slowly and in, in just coming to fruition, um, which is kind of in contrast to the, you know, this whole start private startup idea of moving fast, breaking things. And so we hear a lot about the benefits of going very quickly, but did you guys find any benefit in having to slow down and take a little bit more time or having things, you know, build more slowly? Um, in, in short, uh, no, not really. I, I, <laughs> I mean, well, to be fair, we've only really run this project at one speed, so we can't really contrast, you know, what it would be like if we, if we went really quickly. Um, I, I know sometimes it, it does seem a little bit slow and unnecessary to get so many people to all agree on something before we, before we make the change, but I think overall that has led to a higher quality product in the end, just having so many opinions and making sure everybody's heard before we make a final decision. Uh, I, I think that there are some areas where you know, we would like to have a little bit more velocity, but I will also say that there have been real benefits, I think, to team coordination too, and that's something that's learned over time where we've learned a lot about working in teams because of the nature of, you know, we're, 
you know, no one's our boss. Like, there's no, we're not going to um, kind of demand a thing to be done. There are times when we're uh, like up against a deadline and we're trying to coordinate as a team, but um, I think there's some advantages to working uh, to coordinate as a group with different expertise. Um, and then I also think we've learned a lot around the user, the user research process. Going slowly on that has been interesting, um, but there are areas like around features where we would have been like, oh, we would have liked to have been there by now. So, so some areas, I, I think that's a really good question. What does success look like in 12 months, in three years? Well, what are the time frames? <laughs> 12 months and three years. 12 months and three years. Um, I hesitate to, you know, we're volunteers and um, we're all busy and it's hard to, the further out you predict, the harder it is to do it with accuracy. Um, we are and have been committed to making this a sustainable organization. We're also constrained because we all have obligations outside of this project. And so making that shift will be a clear challenge. We think it's solvable and that's why we've been planning um, on that front for a long time now. We think that that's a soluble problem. Um, Wes pointed out earlier that there are things that we'd like to see with the user interface that are um, kind of lower hanging fruit, but definitely within the next 12 months, um, you should be able to submit events readily, uh, civic engagement opportunities, even the harder ones that, um, where you have uh, events that might be across the city but under a similar category. Um, categorization, it should be easy to find the right type of event that you want to be involved in relative to your interest. Um, we think that uh, you should get more value out of the site if you log in, but that you shouldn't have to log in to get value out of the site. We think that's really important. So those are some of the types of things that um, we think we can have within the year. Three years out is too far to say, uh, to be frank. I don't know. Um, I ha we have some ideas. We've, we've, we've talked about some further out things. I don't know if did anyone else want to talk on that. Yep. 